Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another brand new Bandai model kit and this one is quite interesting. This right here is the Scope Dog from the 80s mech anime Armored Trooper Votoms. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without this absolutely fantastic awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these of your own, link is down there in the description. Now let's check it out. So first off, jumping into the aesthetics, and I always love it when Bandai releases a brand new line of high-grade kits because you know they're always going to be awesome. Especially because we haven't seen a Votoms kit in quite some time. Now, just in case you're not too familiar with what Armored Trooper Votoms is, you can kind of tell from that treble barreled name that this is by Sunrise, the usual kind of naming system like Mobile Suit Gundam. This came out in 1983 and is definitely a lot more militaristic and realistic than something like Gundam. These are more small scale, or should I say small sized mecha. For example, a Gundam would be 20 meters tall in universe. This would be more about 3.8 meters. What actually comes to the scale on this kit, well, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit more later on, but this comes in at about 11 centimeters or so. So it is in and around the 130th to 135th military scale, even though it does not say that on the box. But overall, this is one extremely, extremely nice model kit. Now, as usual, I will mention, I did nothing extra with this whatsoever. This is it out of the box, just double snipped and snapped together. This is extremely, extremely nice. Overall, we've got a nice matte look, which really does complement that militaristic green. So next up, popping it side by side with the actual art of what the scope dog is meant to look like. And as you can see, this is when it comes to Bandai, almost a pointless endeavor at this point because they always do look pretty much perfect. All of the detail you want to see is on there. It's essentially 100% color and accurate besides, well, maybe a couple of little details, but besides that, it looks incredible. So when it does actually come to the colors on this and the color separation, first off, I will mention that I did not panel line this kit. So all of the detail that is on there can be a little bit lost. When you light it from the side, you can see it a little bit better, like that little section there on the front skirting, all the rivets up in the shoulder. There is some little recessed parts in the sides of the legs. All of those will look so, so much better if and when given a little bit of panel lining. The only stickers we have in this kit are the ones up here in the lenses, which do look phenomenal. Now, these are those cool 3D stickers we've been seeing for quite some time with Bandai kits. So these just come on a little sheet of stickers just like so and there is four of each so if you ever do lose these these can flake off you do have some spares or for using in some of your customs these are like the name suggests 3d as in this is a hard piece of plastic not the typical kind of old foil stickers we usually see with high grade bandai kits now there is one minor aspect on this that is color inaccurate that you really can't fault Bandai for too much and that is there are wheels in the bottom of the AT's feet that are basically for to zoom around in the ground kind of like some kind of wheelies. But yeah, those wheels are actually meant to be in a black like a kind of, I guess, tire rubber. They aren't on this, but how often are you really going to be staring at the bottom of the feet? And if you stare at them a lot, just get them painted. Now, one thing that really might make some Votims fans really, 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 really sad is the fact that you cannot open the cockpit, which is just under the head section there. You kind of see the line of where that would open up. Yeah, this does not open up on this kit, which is such missed potential. Even inside of the actual torso, there isn't anything but a joint. So there is really no space for a pilot in there. They did add in the little bit of a gimmick of where it can get down the ground for the pilots to get in, but it is again a little bit of missed potential i know there is two premium bandai versions of this coming out so maybe they come with something if they do i'll pop it right here on the screen right now if not i'll just say they don't now this part right here i usually talk about the different model kit kind of aspects that can be not so great as in the mold lines the seam lines and the nubs that are left over when you cut this out so first off the plastic on here is a nice soft matte green plastic for the most part which doesn't really mark up there are mold lines here and there, definitely, and there's something I've never seen before. Bandai has actually mentioned in the manual where there are big old thick nubs. Now, this is what they say. There's this little symbol for each of them. They're not that bad, really. Like, you think if Bandai would be given a big warning, they'd be colossal, but this is one right here I've cut out. I did kind of sand it down a little bit just to hide it, and there is a little bit of a stress mark, but really, it's not the worst. 
jump into the full 360 spin now so you can see every angle of this kit for yourself in case there's something about it I didn't mention that you want to see. Bandai has really gone all out when it comes to actual simplicity in their high grades, but at the same time making them absolutely perfect. I'm so impressed by this kit. Like I've mentioned, every time a non Gundam Bandai kit comes out, I'm right on top of that because they're so, so cool and it's nice to see these older and less popular mecha getting very nice kits. This just looks great. The matte green on green looks phenomenal. All the color detailing for the most part is there. And I even threw it into another little bit of a pose just to show that this isn't as rigid as it looks at first glance. The Votoms, or should I say the ATs, do look like clunky, awkward robots at times, but Bandai has put some nice articulation in there to make sure it's not too clunky. So lastly, now jumping into a size comparison, and like I said, this is about 11 centimeters, maybe a little bit more if you include the antenna, meaning that it is one small little robot. So there it is side by side with the high grade Gundam kit, a master grade Gundam kit, and a perfect grade Gundam kit completely and utterly dwarfing it. There it is side by side with a high grade Macross kit, the Proto Goyo from Kyokai Senki, and a Space Marine. Why not? So now jumping into the accessories and here's everything the scope dog comes with. So this is a small little simple loadout. We just get the rifle as well as a grand total of three hands and a base adapter. That is all very very simple but like I mentioned there will be more coming out in future more than likely with expanded accessories. So it does come to the hands in here. These are your standard high grade just ball joint into a hole kind of hand and just like we've been seeing with Bandai these days these are non polycap so the whole build is entirely plastic on plastic for better or worse. The standard pair of hands are just your kind of usual fist come holding hands so they do a bit of both and the sculpt in general is quite nice with those nice rounded fingers. We've got the joints molded in there too, so they look pretty good. When it comes to the weapons in here, we've got the heavy machine gun. This is molded out of quite a few parts. We do have some nice color separation being the barrels in that light gray, a bluish gray for the main body. I assume this is the magazine right here, pops off just like so. We've got this little side to side moving handle and overall it looks pretty nice. Attaching in the heavy machine gun is super simple. You just slide the handle into the hand. That is it. No more, no less. The articulation in the arm is extremely nice, so it does mean it is quite easy to get this into the poses that you want, but I will mention the shoulders on this are a little bit loose. Loose in a kind of weird way that they feel fine and then they just pop right off like so. So this happens all the time and I try to move it at the shoulders like every single time without fail, but if you do hold onto the shoulders while posing it, it's not so bad. Overall though, it does fit quite well, you can get it into whatever position you want to, and the weapon itself works out well again. Just watch out for the shoulders. So we do have one alternate hand in here, and that is an alternate left hand. This is for holding on to the front swinging handle for aiming those shots, and basically the same thing applies right here. You just move the arm out and forward like this. We've got a nice mechanism inside the shoulder, which makes sure the arms can really move forward. Of course, you do need to hold the shoulders on because they pop off quite a bit, but once you do get them into position, this looks really, really good. Under the hood, this has some great movement, so it does mean you can get some nice dynamic poses out of it for this cool over-the-top scope dog poses. So the last piece of, well, the last accessory we have in here is this right here this is the action base adapter so this will pop onto any three millimeter peg we've got a little bit of a part there to slide it onto and it just attaches on just like so and does the job absolutely fine actually that holds on very very nicely so lastly now onto the articulation and when it comes to something like a scope dog you wouldn't really expect that much this is rock solid i mean until you move the shoulders then they can pop out quite easily but besides that it's not going to drop a pose on you. On to the usual pose now. So yeah, on the whole, the articulation on this is very, very good, but it is as limited as you'd probably expect from a scope dog. All of the individual articulation is quite nice, but at the end of the day, it does feel like a little less than the sum of its parts. What really, really the hitch I kind of hit was the shoulder when I was trying to get the arm up into the air just would not work at all. This arm cannot reach upwards without flipping it around. It popped out. The shoulder armor is kind of blocking some articulation that is actually in the shoulder that you can't get to because of the shoulder armor and in the end the arm just kept popping off and the end pose is a little bit awkward again. These are meant to be almost like bipedal tanks so they're not really going to be pulling off yoga poses but a little bit disappointing. And before I absolutely forget what puts this scope in scope dog, this scope is also as janky as the shoulders and every time I actually try to move it, I end up knocking it off. This uh, just slides side to side like so, but 
Nothing really seems to clip it in per se. It's just kind of holding on a little bit with a wish and a prayer. Just pull it anyway a little bit funny and it can fall off. And now that I'm actually trying to show that, it's doing pretty fine. So yeah, it actually is clipped in there to some degree, but it is easy to knock off by accident. We also have the various different scopes. You can rotate this around for the different modes. So that is wide angle, normal, and sniping mode. So that's pretty cool. Finally, then we do have what's referred to as the down form mechanism. So that is basically when it gets down so the pilot can get in and out. There is no pilot in this particular model kit right here like I've already complained about already. Anyway, the butt flap moves up just like so. You swing the legs up to the back. They then just come forward a little bit like this right here. And then you just pop them on the ground like some kind of funny looking caterpillar. So basically this is how it gets on the ground so the pilot can climb on in. That's pretty much it. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And what can I say? This is a very nice and somewhat inexpensive high grade of a armored trooper from Votoms. And it does everything that it needs to do. The only real down points are the fact that the shoulders pop every now and then. But besides that, it is a solid nice model kit. It doesn't have crazy articulation, but it will give you what you need, especially to pull off Votoms style poses. This costs in around the $20 or 18 euro mark, so you're definitely getting a nice little model kit for your money. And when it comes to the breakdown, aesthetically, it is very, very nice. It's got that nice matte militaristic greens. We've got those cool stickers in the lenses, so they really do pop. And overall, it looks exactly like it should. This is beautiful. It is a small model though, so if size is important to you, it is very, very small. When it comes to the accessories, there's not much in here, but I just took a quick Google there, and there is an accessory pack coming out on Premium Bandai, so you can enhance what is in the pack that is kind of cool and kind of bad at the same time cool because it is nice to be able to buy it separately and not have to pay for it in box but it sucks that it's premium bandai and not full release lastly then the articulation is fantastic the arms can pop a little bit but besides that it's going to give you everything you need but no over the top poses which you probably wouldn't be looking for now, I usually don't rank these kits, but if this was a Gundam and if I was ranking it, I would give this gold tier because when it comes down to it at the end of the day, this does everything a Votums kit needs to do and no more. It's small, but the price does reflect that. And it's honestly, I, I love it. It's pretty cool. It's a good high grade. You should get one. Anyway, as always, I got mine through Hobby Link Japan. Link in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, or G95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.